Welcome to Geographic Information Systems Essentials. In this video, we're going to introduce the concepts of good map design and cartography. Cartography is the art and science of expressing graphically, usually through maps, the natural and social features of the earth. Good cartography is used to convey information and communicate a geographic concept or relationship. Maps generally serve two roles. They're used for visual thinking and they're used for visual communication. In terms of visual thinking, maps are great for exploring ideas and working with your geographic data. They're useful for generating a hypothesis and confirming that hypothesis. In terms of visual communication, maps are great for communicating what we know, synthesizing information, and presenting findings. However, there are limits to cartography. Just due to the sheer volume of data uh, that is available and can be displayed on a map, a map can only show a selection of features and must always be generalized or simplified. Finding the right amount of detail is, of course, very important too. Too much detail can hide the theme of the map, and too little detail can leave the map viewer feeling lost. Creating a good map relies on the use of visual organization. Visual communication is part visual organization and personality. So you make decisions about the colors and the line weights and things like that. That's your personality. That's the design choices you're making. But it's also organizing the information in a way that best communicates the ideas you're trying to get across. We perceive visual events as holes, which are grasped all at once. So when you see something, you see it not as a uh, series of bits of information, not the individual pieces, but you see the overall patterns, the entire object, uh, the entire design at one time. So it's important to, uh, when you're designing, to think about the viewer who sees your map, who sees your design, all at the same time. In order to create a map that really works best, you need to create balance. Creating balance means using asymmetrical layouts, generally, not always, but generally asymmetrical layouts rather than symmetrical layouts are going to work better. It means putting heavier appearing elements towards the bottom of the page. Again, a generalization. Uh, it's a good starting point, but not always true. And then focusing the design on the optical center of the page, usually a point above the geometric center of the page. Again, these are all guidelines. These are good starting points for people who are trying to figure out how best to uh, communicate things visually. Uh, there's always exceptions to these rules, but again, good starting points. And here's a few different layouts. So you can see on the far left and the third uh, from the left, there's a both symmetrical layouts. Generally, you're going to want to go with asymmetrical layouts. Asymmetrical layouts is more visually interesting and creates a more dynamic uh, page. A well-designed map is also going to make use of visual hierarchy. Visual hierarchy just means that the most important things are the ones that appear uh, that stand out on the page first. Visual hierarchy creates a center of interest that attracts the viewer's attention. It creates a sense of order and balance, and it establishes a pattern of movement to guide the viewer through the composition. Visual hierarchy is the deliberate prioritization of visual weight enabled by the manipulation of visual relationships to create meaning for the audience. So that's just a uh, fancy way of saying, make the most important thing the thing that stands out the most. Things that are less important make them smaller and less uh, prominent. So one key piece of the design of your map is what typefaces or fonts you choose. Now really quickly, what's the difference between fonts and typefaces? Well, font, a very simple way of putting it is font is what you see and the typeface is what you use, where uh, the font is the actual collection of letters and numbers and symbols. The design of the collection is the typeface. So that's just a quick clarification of a font versus a typeface. So uh, in terms of the typefaces that you're going to be using, there's two general kinds of, of typefaces. There's serif and there's sans serif. So serifs are the little legs uh, or uh, the, the additional uh, design elements that uh, you'll see on certain uh, typefaces. Uh, so for example, at the top there you have a sans serif font, uh, in the middle there you have a serif font, and in the bottom image uh, there are the serifs that are highlighted. A few common sans serif fonts uh, are Futura, uh, Franken Gothic, Helvetica, Tahoma, and some common serif fonts include Garamond, Times New Roman, Rockwell, uh, and Gaudi Old Styles. 
Now, when in document production, in, uh, when you're putting together a long document, like a report or a book, uh, the general rule of thumb is that serif fonts are better for bodies of text, and sans serif fonts are better for things like headers. It's a little different for maps. Uh, you don't have necessarily, unless you have a description, uh, long blocks of text. So this is really going to be more about uh, experimentation and uh, design preferences. One thing I would suggest is that you look at maps that you think uh, work quite well as, as visual compositions and see if they're using serif fonts and sans serif fonts uh, and what they're using them for. So now let's talk about the main map elements that you'll find on most maps. These are the kind of things that are generally going to appear on most, if not all, of maps. Uh, the first thing is a descriptive title. Uh, the title should be fairly specific in describing what's going on in the map. And then a legend. A legend is usually a, um, a collection of graphics of symbols or examples of features from the map that describe what those features mean. And then the actual map content, the, the body of the map, and a scale. A scale is incredibly important to help give the viewer a sense of the uh, size and extent of the map content. Labels, of course, are very important, uh, and it's necessary to make sure that uh, they're sized and placed correctly so that they're legible, uh, yet not overlapping with one another. A direction indicator, like a north arrow. Uh, and then very important is to include the source. So where is this data coming from? The source is probably one of the uh, map elements that is too often left out uh, and can really uh, hinder people's understanding of the information being communicated. So that's just a real quick overview of some of the basic ideas of cartography and good map design. We'll be exploring these ideas further as we create our map in ArcGIS.